welcome back to my channel food with chanel you already know the vibes like share subscribe all of that comment down below and let me know where you're coming from if it was my tiktok instagram all of that thank you so so much for all the love on my recent videos guys i've seen you in the comments don't worry i am trying to you know reply to everybody but you know it's a lot today today we are making what are we making again curry martin curry goat whatever you want to call it it, it is curry goat basically because it's goat meat but we're making curry goat today as you're going to see your girl put in the effort this time i seasoned from the night before i'm gonna show you Hold on. your girl seasoned from the night before the thing is cold wrapped up good and ready mm. you already know the vibes ingredients this will always be in the description down below Make sure you're following me on all my socials so you can keep up with any other updates that I've got. Recipes coming out. Why am I still talking? Let's get straight into it. I'm going to finish my tea. As we know. And then we're going to get cooking. Okay, so we have our cleaned goat meat here. I'll put the exact measurements of this, but my butchers or let me say my dad's butchers because he got this meat for me um they're really good they cut off a lot of the fat and stuff but if your butchers don't then just make sure you cut off any excess fat wash it with lemon and vinegar or salt you know the vibes and then here we've got our fresh seasonings we've got some ginger garlic thyme scotch bonnet and scallion or spring onion here we've got some of our dry seasonings, Jamaica Valley curry powder, Maggie liquid seasoning, black pepper, garlic salt, whole pimento, all-purpose dry thyme and some green seasoning. This is optional because basically green seasoning is a blend of this. So that's how you can make your own at-home green seasoning. Obviously, you know, Chanel is just extra. So we're going to add in both you know let's get straight into this 24 hour marinade i told you guys i'm stepping up okay so let's get straight into seasoning this okay guys so if you watched my last video then you know your girl ran out of gloves i've still not managed to get any so you know what we're going to do today we're going to improvise you can probably hear it food bag hand in we're going to season it like that now the reason why i'm not actually just going to use my hands is because curry powder listen to me when curry powder gets on your nails especially if you've got white nails it's not a good time it's not a good time at all so what we're going to do we're going to use the food bag and it's going to still be fine as we know we've got our fresh seasonings here this is about a quarter of a large scotch bonnet pepper so call it that it's about a teaspoon and a half of chopped scotch bonnet pepper you've got some fresh thyme here we've got two large garlic cloves chopped we've got about a teaspoon and a half again of fresh ginger and then we've got two chopped scallions or spring onions so literally all of that is going to go into this as I said, green seasoning is basically that that we've just put in there, but it's the blended up version. Now, to be fair, I could make it on my own, but, you know, the, the dish already takes a lot of work. So today we're using the bottled one. There's two brands that I use. One's called Baron and then this one, which is called Chief. So you can use any of these or any one that you can find. A lot of people always say to me that they struggle in finding it. Any Caribbean supermarket, Afro-Caribbean supermarket will have green seasoning, okay? So it's about a tablespoon of that. Maggie liquid seasoning, you already know the vibes. I use it in practically every recipe. We're going to go in heavy with this, probably about two tablespoons of that. Again, if you watched my other video, you know your girl picked up white pepper as opposed to black pepper. Use black pepper, but I've got white pepper and that should be fine. So we're going to go heavy with this as well. This is going to be about a teaspoon of that. Some garlic salt. About a teaspoon of that as well. We're going to add some whole pimento seeds or allspice berries as some call them. So we're going to add about a small handful. So call it about eight of them. 
I'm gonna put in there. I'm gonna also add some all-purpose seasoning. I always rock with Dunn's River or Jamaica Valley, always. So we're gonna put about two teaspoons of that. Dry time, and that's going to be about a teaspoon as well. Finish that off. Now for the curry powder as well. We're going to add about a tablespoon of this. Actually, you know what? It's about two tablespoons to be fair. Yeah, two tablespoons of that because it is curry that we are making. So the curry I feel look colourful. So we're also going to add some garlic granules. This is kind of optional because you've already got the fresh garlic in there, but I like to add some. So we're going to add some of that. About half a teaspoon of that. And then we're basically going to get straight into it. Get your glove or your food bag. Scrape out all of that excess seasoning that you may have had in your bowl. And then you literally just want to mix it all in. Of course, it's going to be a bit difficult with the bag, but don't worry, just work with me. Take your time, get it all mixed in. And then what we're going to do is marinate this overnight. OK, so it's always best with meat like mutton, goat meat, oxtail. Overnight is always best because all those flavours are going to work in nicely okay so literally all i'm going to do is marinate this in as in mix it in sorry for a few minutes just get everything coated so look as you can see it's getting like that definitely don't wear white and don't have white nails like me when you're making curry dough it's not it's not the one okay because this will stain but that's a good thing you see how the meat is like this yellow color that's basically what you want if it doesn't have that color the meat's just gonna not have that iconic look that you want for it to have okay so once this is all mixed in like so take off your food bag or your glove and then literally this is what your meat should look like nice and yellow and ready to be wrapped but now what i'm going to do is wrap this in some cling film put it in the fridge and then tomorrow we will be ready and remember what i said to you guys i made a hole in the bag you probably can't see it that well but it's literally stained my nails a little bit yeah we're ready gonna put this to marinade now and then I'll see you guys tomorrow okay so as you guys just saw we marinated our meat overnight so we're just gonna uncover this and then we've got our Dutch pot ready and don't worry if you don't have a Dutch pot anything that you make stews in anything like that will be perfect for this so you just literally want to unwrap your meat and then voila this is what it should look like basically i've not added onions or carrots or potatoes yet because i'm going to add it later so that it doesn't mash out during the first part of the cooking process then of course we've got our dutch pot you already know the vibes if you don't have a Dutch pot, like I just said, you can use any sort of stewing type pot. Do you know what I mean? So I'm going to start it off on this fire here, just so that you guys can see what's going on. And then what we're going to do, and then what we're going to do, we're going to put a little bit of oil once it's hot in there. We're going to brown off our meat, but also burn a little bit of curry powder. Now, that probably sounds weird. Let me show you. So... We've got our Jamaica Valley curry powder here. And what we're going to do, we're going to put the oil in and then a teaspoon of this. And it's going to just give it a little more colour. Do you know what I mean? So add about a tablespoon of oil and let that heat up as well. 
And then we're literally gonna add about half a tablespoon of Jamaica Valley curry powder. You can use better pack curry powder as well. That's also one of my faves. And you're also going to need a wooden spoon only because it's not gonna make a lot of noise alongside that. Okay, so once your oil is hot, we are just going to get half a tablespoon, just about, of this. Sprinkle that in. And then basically what you are doing, when I say burn the curry powder, I don't mean literally. It's almost like you're cooking it. You're cooking it out. Like so. This even still needs to get a bit hot. But it kind of just begins to release some colour like this. Okay, so as you guys can see, I've moved it onto a bigger flame and it's already releasing some like smells and flavour. Okay, so once the oil looks like that, it basically should just look yellow. You want to add in your meat. Now, I know I spoke a lot about having stains on nails when cooking meat but i'm getting my nails done so don't worry about it so what you want to do you just want to add in your meat add in everything that's in there then you're basically as I said you're going to brown up this meat so you just want to keep it on a medium high heat and just get this moving around so I'm just going to hold it with that and you just want to cook all that curry seasoning because the reason why you want to almost as we call it cook out the curry is because if you don't you will get a very upset stomach those that know know all my jamaicans or my caribbeans them anybody that's cooked with curry powder then you know if you don't cook it properly it will run your belly as we like to say okay so you just want to get that meat browned it should take about 10 minutes just to get it all browned. Make sure you've boiled your kettle as well so that you've got some boiling water ready to add. And then yeah, what you can also do as well, whilst that's happening, you can put the lid on. Because what it's gonna do, it's just gonna release the juices from the meat for those few minutes and then you can come back, stir it, and it will be good. Okay, so it's been a few minutes, maybe about four minutes now, with the lid on. The meat will just start to release some juices. So as you can see, it's not sticking to the bottom or anything, but it's just browning off nicely. So you just want to stir your meat, get everything working in like so, and just make sure all your pieces are brown. Okay. So as I said, it should take about 10 minutes just to get them all brown on a medium high heat, not too high. You don't want it to, to burn or catch at the bottom as we like to say, you don't want it to start sticking. So again, just leave it like that, put your lid on, check on it again in a few minutes. So it's been about 10 minutes now, as you can see all those juices, that's all the juice coming out of that meat. And it's all browned now. So what we're gonna do, take some of our boiling water and just cover that meat. Now I never know the exact measurement of this, but literally, because this is about two pounds of goat meat here, you literally just wanna make sure that your meat is covered like this, because this is the low and slow process that we're talking about now. This is going to literally cook probably about a total of maybe about three hours on for now it's going to be medium low between low and medium low because you don't want it too high and you don't want it too low either just for this part of it but put it just between low and medium low 
and check on it in about 45 minutes and then we're going to give it a stir after that or probably about an hour actually we're going to come back to this in about an hour yeah or maybe even sooner i don't know but you guys are going to be here with me so yep just get your lid put it on now and leave it alone so we are an hour into cooking this is how our meat is looking it should just be starting to get there now so this isn't fully cooked at all so obviously everything looks brown and you know it's working its way in but it's still tough because goat meat it needs a long time to really to work in together and as you can see the pieces of meat have shrunk and all those juices are in there so now what we're gonna do we're gonna add a whole scotch bonnet pepper and this is like about half of a large onion don't worry about it being spicy this is purely for the flavor of the scotch bonnet pepper so not the spice the spice is all on the inside so this has got a little bit of a kick because i've added some chopped scotch bonnet pepper in there but this one here is literally just going to give it some flavor so we're going to add all of that in there and then also later on we are going to remove the scotch bonnet pepper anyway so you don't keep it in there for the whole duration of cooking probably for about another hour i'll say i might check on this in 45 minutes like how it's been an hour and now i've added the onions in and then i've got some chopped potatoes as well but they go in probably at about the last half an hour to 40 minutes of cooking possibly so yeah you just want to get that back on it's still between medium low and low so we're just going to put the lid back on and then check back on that in about 45 minutes we are another about 50 minutes in now so that's how we are looking a lot of the water has basically gone now as you can see let me take out this scotch bonnet so you see how the scotch bonnet is basically still whole it's not popped or anything that means that all the flavor has come out but none of the spice okay so i'm going to take this out now because i don't want it to pop if anything i might add it back in later i'm just going to give this a bit of a stir i'm going to also add in some more water in a sec but if you see that meat is beginning to cook and get nice and tender and fall off of the bone to be honest it's kind of falling off of the bone already but it's still not there yet it's still not there yet don't be fooled you still want for it to get some more time to get even softer than this so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pour in some more water this time just so that it's just about covering so not totally submerging it in water but just enough like so and then i'm also going to add in a beef stock cube and the reason why i use beef is because goat meat is quite a uh, how could you call it um it's the type of meat that needs a lot of love basically so i like to add a beef stock cube in there mix that in as well it just gets those flavors working together even more I might even add a bit more water in because what we're going to do in about 40 minutes in another 40 minutes we're going to add the potatoes in so let me add in a bit more boiling water yeah that should be fine and then again cover it it's still on that medium low low heat <laughs> so this is nice and low and slow we've not rushed this at all and that's the best thing about when you're cooking curry goat if you cook it low and slow it's not tough it's not dry and all those flavors really get to work their way into the meat so we're just going to cover this back up again and then we'll check back up on it in about 40 to 45 minutes okay, so it's been about 45 minutes now so we're going to check it again and we're at practically the final stages of cooking now so oh yes 
yes yes and yes honeys this is looking nice this is looking good and what i like to do is what i'm doing now i'm kind of like taking pieces of meat and pressing it against the side so then i can see so what i'll do i'll even get a different spoon so you guys can see so you see that meat oh hold on you see that meat there nice and juicy and then i'm going to keep one piece of the meat on there and then you just got to kind of like press it to like see how tender it is and like this is getting there it's not fully there yet it's not fully there yet but it needs probably like another another 45 minutes yeah i might even taste a piece of it because I need to just make sure this is another good thing to do that like after about two and a half hours of cooking time you can taste a piece just to see how tender it is so i'm gonna do that now mm. oh wait hold on mm -mm. hold on okay so people the meat is tender the meat is so tender look some of the bones have fallen off already i'm here saying it needs longer what you need to do now so follow me here i've got i've got about this is about three potatoes in here but i don't actually think i need them all so what i might do let me actually let me see i'm going to add it with the water because what's going to happen is all of that all of that water is going to cook the potatoes and then essentially this is going to get thicker you get me so add in a bit more water and the potatoes and then leave this for about half an hour to 40 minutes until the potatoes are cooked now normally i would add some carrots but you know what i just realized i forgot to chop them up so we're not adding them today we're not adding them today but we're gonna add potatoes so as you would normally if you're going to add carrots you would have added them now basically at the same time okay so what i'm gonna do put the lid on and leave that for about another half an hour to 40 minutes i'm gonna get some rice on oh also i know you're probably looking at this thinking oh my god there's a lot of water it's not thick enough we can thicken this up later but the potatoes will actually thicken this up as well so let me put this back on we're going to leave it again on medium medium low 40 minutes 30 minutes should be about and then we'll come back okay so it's been about 30 minutes i've got some rice on but let's check on this curry goat here and it's looking like our potatoes are cooked because they're starting when they start to kind of look like that as you can see you know that it's basically cooked let's even get you guys in closer okay you guys are in close you can see juicy delicious that's what we want but there is a few things that we need to do first so get yourself a little bowl or just anything that's small so i'm going to use this little thing here and basically you want to take out any excess oil some people don't do this and to be fair i just can't run with it like you need to take out that excess oil and the reason why is because if not when you put your gravy on your plate you're just going to have one whole heap of oil fat you know it's not the one so make sure that you do this it may seem very long and tedious but believe me it's worth it okay and then once we've done this i want to build up the gravy now you guys already know how i get down 
you already know I either use corn flour or I use Bisto to build up my gravy don't knock it until you try it and if you are someone that likes one whole leap of gravy then I mean this is for you because what you don't want to do is have you could cook this down reduce it and then the gravy will get thicker itself because of the potatoes but if you like gravy then you're not going to have a lot of gravy are you so that's why I like to use that technique so just keep on going taking this out and then once you've taken out as much as you can then we'll get on to our gravy okay so in this bowl here i've got about two and a half tablespoons of gravy granules i've actually used chicken gravy granules and i don't know why i prefer the chicken one but for me it's just it's just better you've just got to trust the process but sometimes i do use the beef one as well you know so right now i'm going to use the chicken one and you guys are going to see how it still tastes just as good and then you're going to add about three serving spoons for of your gravy and then literally you're just going to mix it until it gets thicker and all of those gravy granules have worked in with your gravy from the pot and then once it's all mixed in you're literally just going to pour all of that in make sure you scrape it all out get that all into the bowl put this bowl to the side as well just in case because you might need to mix some more but if my measurements are correct it should be fine and then get your wooden spoon and don't mix more just like push it around because you don't want those potatoes to basically start to break apart because they're already cooked at this point so you don't want them to go to mashed potatoes if they break apart that's fine but you don't want them to mash too much and as you guys can see it's starting to thicken up you see what i mean about gravy because once you put this on the right you you guys already know how i get down with the rice okay and the gravy on top this is the gravy that you need yeah and i mean if you don't have gravy granules as i said corn flour water and you're good to go but that's basically it if i get a spoonful of it so you can kind of see that it's got thicker now but that still just needs some time to just work its way in together so what i'm going to do i'm going to put the lid back on and i'm going to turn up the heat slightly i'm going to put it on medium now and the reason why i'm going to put it on medium is because everything is basically cooked it doesn't need much longer at all so once this is bubbling up the way it is now i'm going to put the lid on and then leave it for about 10 minutes and then we're going to check on it again and it should be ready the rice that i've got here basically done as well perfecto so what i'm going to do with the rice i'm just going to put the foil on to steam it you already know the vibes for five minutes and then the rice is cooked and there we have it guys 10 minutes later i've turned the heat back down obviously just look at the gravy now we're ready now we are ready to plate it up look at that your curry goat takes about all in all three hours but i'm telling you you ain't gonna have good curry goat unless you cook it low and slow my friends if you rush it mm -mm 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 -mm, honey that's not what you want you want low slow flavorful goodness and i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i had a little taste of the gravy yeah yeah crazy crazy so what we need to do you already know the vibes we need to get this onto a plate asap so that you can try this with me okay let's give this a taste actually no hold on what am i doing i've not even got you guys in clues flavors and that gravy is just you see what i mean now you've got to add the thickening agent whichever thickening agent you're using it's worth it because this is what you need that right there that's the type of gravy that you want and you want it on top of some white rice 
and then preferably if you've got some mac and cheese or some coleslaw homemade yeah yeah let's plate this up there we go some of those potatoes as well can't forget that can't forget that now i don't know about you guys but i like rice on my gravy you already know the vibes you already know how the thing's set already you already know so i'm going to be putting just a bit more meat on there guys you want a bit more i think you do and then we want some of the gravy oh ooh, ooh, ooh. yep there we are and there you have it guys curry go white rice the best combo known to man i don't know about you guys if you've had it then you know let's give this a try together let's do it try it at home let me know come on look at that meat delicious if you've not tried curry goat before don't knock it till you try it because i know this looks good let's give this a taste guys come on come on you already know the vibes already you already know the vibes oh. <laughs> I'm already so excited. I was so excited. Imagine I burnt my hand. I burnt it there. You probably can't even see it. It always happens to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm really bad at burning myself. But I was so excited trying to get the meat on the plate. I burnt my arm. So I'm in a little bit of pain. But. You know. You know. You know. <sighs> Come on. Any of my curry goat lovers. This. Yeah. I already know. You're wanting to see me try this. You want to try. Of course. I'm going to give you the first bite. You know why this is so special as well? I'm so excited. The reason why this is so special is because I literally. About. 30 minutes ago. Hit 50,000 followers on Instagram. So your girl is excited. I'm kind of like. Oh my God. It's Friday. So you know. But until then. You know take the first bite let's get some of the meat for y'all i want you to see how tender moment of silence just just that there you go there you go i told you don't play with me and my recipes where are my fans where are my family where where are you at let the newbies know if they're new let them know don't sleep on her recipes in it because you know you know the vibes you know the vibes that meat like came off of that bone that bone there that bone there that meat just came off of there you take that oh how can i forget the rice come on come on you already know how chanel gets down you already know how chanel gets down you take that i'm already looking at this like come on again don't watch my nails i need to go and sort it out you already know but you take that and now i'm gonna take Again, I forgot to pray. Lord, thank you for this and for the hands that made it because that rice and gravy right there is calling me. I'm just saying, I'm sorry, hold on. If you don't add butter to your rice, please. Okay. Okay. Tell me, if you are a Caribbean yard food lover, this is what you need right now. Take that. Take it, friend. Take it because you just... Oh. Mm -mm. Okay. Look at the meat look at that you think i was playing come on i told you already low and slow is the way to go if you go low and slow you're gonna get tender meat okay take it take it because you know why you're gonna take it my 10k gang is almost here okay i said it in the final video before go and share the channel with a friend and let them know let them know to take that 
take it go and make ingredients list down below go and make this recipe for your family for one Sunday dinner this is Friday's recipe you already know a recipe drops every Friday you can be making this for Sunday dinner come on oh my I know you probably think half the time I am exaggerating but my real ones know the ones that make it they know they know they know mm -mm -mm. okay I'm gonna stop I'm gonna stop you know why because the camera battery is about to die <laughs> oh thank you guys I love y'all I love you guys so much you know you just oh you make me feel so good you literally don't know how much this all means to me 50k on Instagram like <sighs> honestly I'm so thankful thank you so much Insta TikTok all of you Honestly, I can't express how thankful I am. I just can't believe I'm hitting all these milestones still because I did kind of think it would get to a point where everyone would be like, okay, we're tired, we're tired. But you're not tired, so, you know, join the family if you're not. If you're watching this and you're thinking this girl is mad, join the mad party. Welcome to the party, join the family. You already know Chanel A. Wallace on TikTok and Food with Chanel on Instagram and on YouTube. You already know the vibes. Like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. I'll see you guys in the next video because it's about to be lit.